Hey guys, remember when I got that fish finder that was like yellow and kind of funky looking? Well, it didn't find any fish. Okay, so to be real and fair, the fish finder that I bought for 39 bucks, I knew that it was going to probably end up being more or less a depth finder, which is exactly what it does. So what I want to do today is an unboxing. This is the unboxing for the Striker Plus for CV. So first things first, let's open this thing and get it out of the box. So cracking the box open, we're going to reveal, of course, the uh, Garmin unit itself wrapped in plastic. So you can see here, it's nicely packaged. Let's get a quick look at this thing. You've got a couple ports on the back, X, D, C, R, and power. I think one goes to the transducer, one goes to the power, makes sense. And this is your uh, mounting little cup here. Let's do this, sorry, Pat. I take the privilege of pulling that off. <clears throat> Pat and I joint ventured this one. Uh, he had a gift card from Christmas. I had some money. This was $179, I believe. Maybe it was a little closer to $200 by the time we were all said and done. But um, it was the budget-friendly unit that we wanted. It had the two different views. And we'll talk about that in a second. And, um, yeah, it kind of had the features we were looking for. We're hoping it's going to work for us. So time will tell. Put that aside, let's keep going into the box. And you have a cover that goes on this, which is probably gonna be helpful in some rain. I imagine this thing would have some type of water resistancy, you would hope, but maybe it doesn't. I would think this goes on like this. And, you know, I saw a guy online saying how this cover seemed like it came off kind of easy. And this doesn't. It feels like it's on there pretty tight. Maybe he was putting it on upside down. No, I think it only goes right side up. Now, once I get it on there, it's pretty tight. So I don't think that's going to be coming off very easily in the boat. Um, some wiring. Now, just by watching other videos, I know that this is the power cable. And this has a nice little cover on the back here. Four prong little deal. Uh, you put this cover on, it protects it from getting, you know, slinging in the mud and stuff when you're putting your boat or your kayak in and out. Um, and this power cord goes into the back of this unit. And then, of course, this powers over to your uh, battery, which I do have one here, and we might take a look at it in just a second. So there's your cover, your unit, and your power cord. Now this is a mount, I believe. It's funny, you know, after you buy so many GoPros, you start to recognize what's what. And yeah, that's your mount for your unit right there. Looks like, yep. And you get to adjust your mounting angle. And to unhook this, you just push in on that and pull out and it comes decoupled from the mount. So that's pretty cool. Um, some paperwork, which I never read that, which is probably why I break half the stuff that I buy. All right, let's look at each one of these things. First of all, here's the Garmin transducer trolling motor mount. So they say that this thing could be mounted to a trolling motor. I don't know if I'm going to do that because well, that book's kind of weird. Look at that. They like staple it. Let's go back to 1983. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do the uh, trolling motor mount because my trolling motor is not permanently mounted to my boat. I take it on an awful lot. I drop it in the floor of the garage, so I'll probably end up breaking it. I'll probably find a way to mount this temporarily off one of the sidebars or rails on the Sun Dolphin so I can take it on and off as I need to. And I have seen some people say that the trolling motor mount actually doesn't fit some of the trolling motors, especially some of these little baby trolling motors that us junior league fishermen have. Um, and this is the transducer mount template which I'll keep that because that'll probably come in handy. And this looks like, I'm not going to pull this out because I don't want to lose parts, but this looks like the trolling motor mount piece. Um, this looks like some mount clips and some wire management stuff. And this looks like the actual, you know, mount for the transducer. And this looks like also a piece that would mount 
in, in conjunction with this transducer for sure. This looks like something, you know, that would mount onto the boat. We'll figure all that out soon enough. And last but not least, the transducer. This is the long cable for the transducer. This also has an end that plugs into the transducer port on the head unit. And that right there is your transducer, which will pick up all the information that you're gonna get from the bottom. And that's it, that's the uh, unboxing. So everything I'm not gonna play with, I'm gonna put back in there so I don't lose it. And then let's keep this head unit. I'm gonna see if I can put this head unit together. Um, oh boy, let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can put this head unit onto the battery and see if I can get like a demo mode or anything for you guys to look at. Let's see what we can do. These ends just come tinned, but they're not actually terminated. So you have to probably terminate these ends to work with whatever battery configuration you have. Um, I might even figure out a way to make some plug system for this where I can just plug it in and unplug it when I get in out of the boat. Um, but without further ado, let's hit the power button and see what happens. Oh yes, we have liftoff. Look at that. Okay, so hopefully you guys can read that screen. I'm not sure. I went ahead and dimmed down the uh, settings on my camera so you could hopefully see it. So first thing you're gonna do is select English. Okay, it's not a touch screen. <laughs> you got the traditional. Transducers just gonna power down and check the transducer. Okay, I'm gonna act like that. Let's go split. All right, it's not gonna let me show you a screen without the transducer connected. So let's see what the settings has. System. Uh, let's see what system is all about. Beeper, you got alarms only, so I imagine you can make this thing be quiet and just beep if something big happens below. You've got GPS, which I think GPS uh, requires maybe some type of service or, you know, continuing monthly fee or something, but I'm not sure. If you guys know more about these, let me know. Um, I'll find out soon enough. You've got the auto power off. Um, I would imagine if it sits dormant or maybe the transducer is disconnected, it might just say, after a while, I'm just going to shut down. English system information simulator. Let's do simulator on. Some features depend on externally connected devices. Um, I'm probably going to have to go back. My vessel, you can define your boat. It's on the keel. Um, I want to offset the temp, you know, whatever it is. Um, you can set alarms. Let's see what those alarms look like. You have navigation alarms. Okay, so if you have like waypoints and places marked, probably could let you know you're either close or near them. Um, system alarms, let's see if that's true. Arrival, anchor drag. Okay, I guess it will let you know if things are happening. Um, off course mode, that's there too. You've got alarm clock, device voltage. Um, no idea what that is. GPS accuracy, no idea what that is. Um, units, navigation, let's go back. And let's see if we can get a traditional view up. Okay, there we go. So that's kind of cool. Um, so you can see this is pretty good. I'm gonna zoom in on the top camera. Give you guys a better view. I think you can see that. Might be a little bright. But this is the traditional view, um, and these little arcs are supposedly fish or bait fish. These You can see them going by, um, especially if they're suspended off the bottom. And you can see as the depth changes, it'll change the range in which it's showing you. But it definitely shows you some different structure and some different things on the bottom of this um, that's going to be super helpful. And so like here, here's a column of something. I don't know if that's fish or if that's some type of uh, underbrush. Um, but yeah, this could be very, very helpful and informative. But you can see the range of depth changing and the screen adjusting. So here we got a little busy screen. Got, might have some activity going on here. But I think the fish are usually indicated in like a little upside down check mark. So if we go back and we go clear view, this is where you can see the bottom a lot better. This is gonna give you more uh, information on your structure and whether you're dealing with a bush or a rock. And it will also show fish as well. Me and Pat wanted this uh, clear view in addition to the normal view. There was other ones available that were like 139, 129, but we 
we put up the extra 50, 60 bucks to get the dual view. We're going to have like a dual view mode. So this will tell us kind of what's going on below a little bit better than just the one. And I think you can change the orientation of these views. They kind of show you the same thing, um, but in different ways. So whereas this one shows you structure, this one kind of might show some fish or floating debris or something in the water. So here's a couple check marks of fish that you don't see on this screen, but you see on that screen. So we'll probably be in this screen the most, but if we want to see kind of more detail of what's going on down below, we might go into this other clear view mode. Um, that's very cool. And then quick draw map. Again, this is all display stuff. You can do map and traditional. So this will show you kind of where you're headed, your course heading, and show you what's going on underneath, which is nice. And I think you can change your view Maybe if you go over here, you go to traditional sonar menu, clear view menu, configure your combination, and you can, oh, here's where you go, oops, here's where you go, um, split view vertical versus horizontal. You click that. Okay, now if we go back, that's the one, that's the view that Pat and I really like. Um, you can kind of see all the little fishies up here, and then you can see the structure a little bit better down there. And I think this is going to be, the view we use 90% of the time when we're fishing. So, um, yeah, this is just the quick down and dirty. Wanted to show you guys what this thing looked like, how it looked when it turned on, what came in the box. And my next step is going to be reading the manual, figuring some of this stuff out, seeing how it works, finding out how to mount it on my boat, waiting for the weather to be good enough to get out in the boat. Because just to give you guys an update, the weather around here has been like starting the morning in the 28 to 32 to 34 range. And then ending up at around 45 or 50 during the day, which sounds great. But in the mornings, it starts out, which, which is when I like to fish. I like to get up early and go fishing in the mornings. But you start out with that glaze of ice. So that's kind of a pain in the neck to deal with. And then by about 10, 11 o'clock, it melts off. <clears throat> so I haven't had a lot of midday fishing time lately. But Pat and I are probably, now that we have this toy, going to figure out a reason to go out, even if it's freezing cold. So uh, you guys stay tuned. Part two of this will be the install and mounting on the boat and maybe a little more in-depth of how to deal with this screen, how to read it, and what to do with it. Capital Bass Fishing will be going strong all 2021. I appreciate all of you, and hopefully uh, I'll get some merchandise and some things going and some new activity for the springtime. You guys take care. Have a nice day. Tight lines. See you soon.